Welcome to the RTX Bootcamp. In three short videos, we're going to show you how to build and run a real-time timer application using Interval Zero's RTX, which transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. Here in video one, we're going to configure RTX for optimal real-time performance. In video two, we're going to build and debug a simple RTX example. And in video three, we're going to build the real-time timer application. But before we get started, we're going to demonstrate the power of RTX and Windows. Now I want you to listen to two tones. Here's tone one. So as you just heard, that tone, although annoying, is a very constant tone. And what that tone is, is RTX running on Windows, and RTX is toggling a speaker port at 100 microsecond intervals. And because it's successfully able to do that, that's why you're able to hear the constant tone. Now, let's listen to tone two. So as you just heard there, that's a pretty jagged sounding tone. And the reason why that is, that's Windows running by itself attempting to toggle the speaker port at 100 microsecond intervals. And as you can tell by the jagged sound, Windows was unsuccessful in doing so. So now let's take a closer look comparing those two tones in terms of real-time performance. Now let's take a look at the Windows results. Here we have that timer period 100 microseconds running for 5 seconds. So based on that, you should see around 50,000 total ticks. And as you see here, Windows fell far short, only completing 246. So based on that, Windows without RTX, we have less than a 1% success rate in meeting real-time performance. In other words, that means that 99% of your real-time functions were essentially being missed with Windows. So while Windows is a great general purpose operating system, it is a very poor real-time operating system. Now let's look at this same example running on Windows now transformed by RTX. So here we can see sample periods the same 100 microseconds we have running for five seconds. Total ticks we hit it. So you can see Windows with RTX we have a 100 percent success rate meeting all the real-time performance and that's why you heard earlier why the RTX tone was so steady. So now let's talk about how to configure your system for optimal performance. So first let me tell you what kind of system I'm running on. This is actually a quad-core Intel machine with Windows 7 and I have Visual Studio 2010 on it. So now we've already completed our installation of RTX and activated it and the next thing we we'll want to do is configure it for optimal performance. So you'll see a shortcut on your desktop to RTX properties. Once you double click on that you'll then come to this about screen which is, goes through what version of RTX you're on. Next we'll go to the system tab. So there's a couple important things here. First thing is the startup type. By default it's set up for manual so that when you start an RTX application, RTX will actually start to run. So we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. You can set it up to be automatic as well where the subsystem will start with Windows, but we'll leave it a manual. The behavior area, we'll click on settings. There's a lot here, but the thing I want to focus in on is right here, the HAL timer period. This HAL timer period is your hard real-time timer in inside of RTX that is separate from Windows. So you can set this up to be as fine a granularity down to one microsecond ticks in your system, but we're going to go ahead and leave it at 100 microsecond ticks, okay? So we'll go ahead and exit there. And the last thing here is processes. So by default, what it's saying here is you can have up to 10 pr application processes in your system. You can have more or less. You can configure and control the number right here. Okay, so let's move to the debug tab. Really want to just point out that we're, here's where we're going to leave the default user level debugging. This allows us to use Visual Studio to do all of the debugging. And FYI, this version of RTX 2012 supports attaching to a live process. So that is a new feature that is now supported inside of Visual Studio. And so let's go ahead and move to the memory tab. Here we'll look at some of the defaults. A local memory pool, what that is, that's the real time memory pool that's allocated for RTX when RTX starts up. So it's requested from Windows. By default, it's 64K here, which is plenty for the application we'll be doing. Based on your system needs, you can make this larger or smaller if you'd like. Over here, allocation. 
What this is saying here is in your application, when you make requests from memory, by default it says to request from Windows. But really, any requests from Windows are non-deterministic, so I do recommend that you check and move to request from local memory pool. So it'll make a call to request memory from this pool, which is deterministic. So we'll go ahead and make that change and click apply. And then this final a box here just says what's the maximum amount of memory you can request. And this just says 64 megabytes. So we'll go ahead and leave the default there, but you can change it. Okay, and we'll now move to the starvation tab. This is really not applicable in our example because we're on dedicated systems. In other words, they're multi-core systems where Windows has a fixed number of cores and RTX has its number of cores. This is really for a unit processor system. So we'll go ahead and move past this. Exceptions, so really the highlight here is just to point out that RTX supports what's called structured exception handling. So it's a really nice way to handle any types of ex exceptions in the system. And based on the type of exception, you can select what you want done, either the traditional handling of the exception, or you can stop and dump memory, or you can break into it with the debugger. Okay, so some nice ways of catching ex exceptions in your system. Now, uh, one thing I should point in the hardware tab here, we're here now. The top area here about devices, this area is about converting for example, a third-party board from Windows control over into RTX control. So RTX, for example, can control an Ethernet card and have real-time control over that card. We're not going to cover that in this video, but you should see this in a future, more advanced video talking about how to convert over hardware devices. This area here is about Intel speed step technology. So one thing you'll find in a lot of processors now is a lot of power saving modes. These are great in, in many applications, but for real-time applications, power savings is not beneficial because they tend to slow down the clocks. So right here we have these two checkboxes checked because by default we're going to disable those power saving features so that we can keep a very consistent and a high speed deterministic clock. So I recommend you continue to leave those checked. And then finally down here you probably won't visit this area unless you really need to. This is for looking for possible latency causing devices. So for example if you started to build your system and saw some latencies in your system System. This is where you'd click the settings tab and look at possible suspects that could be causing latencies within your real-time system. And so for example, my system here is showing me the video card and the audio card. You know, they could be fine, but it's just areas where you could look at, disable it, and see if it has an effect on your real-time performance. Okay? And then so let's move on to the TCP IP tab. So for those of you who need real-time Ethernet as far as communications, RTX provides a real-time Ethernet stack. So you can enable this from the RTX properties. So we'll go ahead and enable it, turn on verbose, verbose mode for more debugging information. Ideal processor means you can select which core you want that TCP IP stack to run on on the RTX subsystem, and then here's a configuration file. So again, we'll check those, click apply, and then the final tab is the control tab. So this gives you status and some basic control over the subsystem. So here under boot configuration, this just goes over what's inside of your system. We have four processors, one processor is dedicated for Windows, three for RTX, and we're licensed for up to 31 cores. Down here is where you can manually start and start, start and stop the subsystem. So you can see it's stopped right now. If we start it, you'll see these all change to running. And then finally, this modify button, if we were to click on that, you'll come back to the activation and configuration window you saw during the installation process. And this is where you can configure how many Windows cores you want versus RTX cores. And again, this was reflecting our current selection, one for Windows and three for RTX. And if you make any changes, you'll click done and then you restart for the changes to take effect. So now, once you've gone through this, you now have an optimized RTX configuration and we're ready to get started. In the next video, we'll go over how to build and debug a simple RTX application. So we hope you'll tune in and take a look as we continue to build towards a real-time timer application.